In this video, we'll look at the surprising reasons why Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, a big bank that was once very important to the tech industry, went out of business. We'll also talk about what the fall of SVB might mean for the future of technology finance. We will examine how it could change the industry and affect tech startups, investors, and financial institutions. But before we dive in, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay updated with our latest insights. Now, let's unravel the mystery behind this seismic event in tech finance. Here we go. Let's take a trip down memory lane to the early 1980s. Picture this, a friendly poker game between two buddies leads to the creation of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB. Can you believe it? When it was founded in 1983, SVB's main goal was to help companies backed by investors get deposits and grow. Soon enough, they expanded their services to support clients well beyond their startup days. You know, there was a time when real estate loans created some challenges for SVB in the early 90s, but they pushed through and even went on to finance industries like wine. Cheers to that! When the dot-com bubble burst in the early 2000s, many banks went under, but not SVB. Under CEO Ken Wilcox's leadership, the bank stayed true to its mission, focusing on serving IT firms. They eventually expanded into private banking and even opened international offices in places like Bangalore, London, Beijing, and Israel. Now here's where it gets interesting. During the 2007 to 2008 financial crisis, SVB truly stood out. They received a $235 million loan from the federal government through the TARP program, and guess what? They paid it back in just two years. Talk about dedication to their customers and innovation in serving the tech community. Under the helm of CEO Greg Becker, SVB kept making waves. They partnered with the Shanghai Pudong Development Bank to support startups in China and even dealt with renminbi currency. With their innovative spirit and unwavering commitment to customers, it's no wonder SVB has become such a key player in the world of banking. Let's take a closer look at what happened to Silicon Valley Bank, once the go-to for tech startups and established businesses in the tech sector. A lot of these companies and their employees trusted SVB with their hard-earned money, making deposits and taking out loans. By December of 2022, SVB had accumulated over $200 billion in assets, putting it among the top 20 largest banks in the United States. But things took a turn for the worse when the Federal Reserve started raising policy rates rapidly in 2022, skyrocketing from virtually 0% to 5% in just a single year. Companies in need of funds found it more difficult to secure them as tech stocks and digital assets were sold off and cryptocurrency exchanges faced shutdowns. The rate hike also meant that SVB and other banks saw the value of their existing bonds decline. Typically, this wouldn't be too challenging to wait until the bonds matured and the principal was repaid. But when rates were low, many banks chose longer-term bonds because the returns on short-term debt securities were not very good. Sadly, due to the Fed's swift rate hikes, a lot of these longer-term bond holdings are now essentially worthless. When customers caught wind of the bank's balance sheets, they began withdrawing their money. To keep up with the demand, SVB had no choice but to offload $21 billion in loss-making longer-term U.S. government bonds and mortgage-backed securities. This led to a real loss of about $1.8 billion for the bank. When news of the plans for an IPO on March 9, 2023 surfaced, the bank run intensified, with Peter Thiel's founder fund even advising all of its portfolio companies to close their SVB accounts. So the FDIC stepped in to protect depositors, ensuring that as many of the bank's assets as possible were returned to them. Unfortunately, this could potentially obliterate the value of shares owned by SVB Financial Group, the bank's parent company. This story serves as a cautionary tale and a stark reminder that even the largest and most successful institutions can falter in uncertain times. It's important to stay alert, keep an eye on the markets, and know how your investments are doing. You know, it's interesting to see how unique Silicon Valley Bank was among financial institutions. They had deposits more vulnerable to interest rate fluctuations, customers who were mostly big businesses, and a larger portion of their total assets invested in securities. But despite the challenges, the FDIC is working hard to reassure insured depositors while SVB Financial tries to find buyers for its other assets. Even though SVB's collapse has shaken the banking industry, there's really no need to panic. 
Its assets only represent 0.91% of all U.S. banking assets, so the impact on other financial institutions should be minimal. Plus, the Fed has been working tirelessly since the 2008 crisis to ensure that banks can weather any storm. So while we can't rule out any further financial failures entirely, the banking system remains pretty stable and well prepared for any challenges that come its way. What do you think about the current state of the banking system and the measures taken to ensure stability? Share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights. Amidst all the buzz and uncertainty surrounding the future of Silicon Valley Bank, a fascinating rumor has emerged. Could the enigmatic CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, ride to the rescue and buy the bank? The speculation caught fire on Saturday, March 11, 2023, when Musk openly mentioned that he'd be open to considering such a move. Get this, one of Elon's followers tweeted, I think Twitter should buy SVB and become a digital bank. And Musk's response? I'm open to the idea. Talk about stirring up excitement. As you might expect, Elon Musk's tweets about how he might buy the struggling Silicon Valley bank, SVB, went viral and got lots of attention from the online world. Some folks thought it could be a game changer for Twitter's prospects as a digital bank, while others cracked jokes about giving Musk something else to keep him busy. So what do you think about the idea of Twitter transforming into a digital bank? Could it be a smashing success, especially with someone like Elon Musk at the helm? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop us a comment below. The failure of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, has sent shockwaves through the tech and finance industries. It has shown that even long-standing institutions are not invulnerable. The fact that SVB went out of business because of a huge $1.8 billion loss on low-yield bonds shows how important risk management and diversification are in the financial industry. Business owners and entrepreneurs who thought SVB was the gold standard for tech financing now don't know what their financial future will be like. Many of them are scrambling to transfer their funds to other banks. While government regulators step in to offer deposit guarantees and job assurances to SVB employees, the collapse of SVB has left a void for the tech sector, which was already having trouble raising money due to falling technology stock prices and rising interest rates. This has led to concerns about funding for high-risk tech ideas, which SVB has specialized in since its inception. As venture capitalists become more careful about where they put their money, the tech landscape is likely to become more fragmented, giving larger tech companies an edge. The closure of SVB also serves as a harsh lesson for entrepreneurs who may have mistakenly placed all their capital in one institution. The need to diversify investments with larger banks, often considered safer havens, has become more apparent. As the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC, and SVB Financial work to fix the problems caused by the bank's failure, it is important to think about how stable the financial institutions we rely on are. The future of tech finance may see new players stepping in to fill the void left by SVB, but the event has taught us valuable lessons about risk management and the importance of diversification. It's clear that the fall of Silicon Valley Bank has had a profound impact on the tech financial world, but even in the midst of uncertainty, there's an opportunity for new players to step up and fill the void. We're entering uncharted territory, and the lessons learned from SVB's collapse will shape the future of the industry. So how do you think the demise of Silicon Valley Bank will impact the future of tech finance? Will the industry adapt and find new ways to support innovative ideas? Share your thoughts in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights into the world of tech finance.